Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Everyone, hope you're doing well, inshallah So I want to continue with lesson number three <coughs> Where we look at uh, the Majmu' Rasail of Ibn Rajab al-Hanbali May Allah bless him So he says وَالسَّبَبُ تَيْسُوِ تَرِيقُ الْجَنَّةِ عَلَى طَالِبِ الْعِلْمِ Why is it made easy for the student of knowledge, Talib al the student of knowledge or the one that's seeking knowledge or the one that's seeking out knowledge. Why is it easy for that person or why is it made easy for that person uh, on their way into Jannah, Tariqul Jannah, the path to paradise? <clears throat> why? If he or even she seeks with it, with knowledge, Wajhullah, the the pleasure of Allah the word waj means face but we don't say face we say uh, the pleasure of Allah would be one way of saying it <clears throat> so when a person seeks through knowledge the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal, the exalted and they are seeking his uh, his pleasure so i.e. knowledge should be sought to seek the pleasure of Allah to seek the pleasure of God أَنَّ الْعِلْمَ يَدُلُّ عَلَى اللَّهِ That knowledge uh, points, alludes towards Allah. يَدُلُّ دَلَالَ To point towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala مِنْ أَقْرَبِ الطُرُقْ وَأَسْهَلُهَا It's the it's the closest way of reaching God <coughs> and the most easy way of reaching Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because that's the purpose. Purpose for a person should be ought to be that they want to seek the pleasure of Allah and knowledge seeking knowledge is the easiest and uh, closest way a person can reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as long as he says as he mentions here if he seeks it or she seeks it for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فَمَنْ سَلَقَ طَرِيقَهُ وَلَمْ يُعَوِّجْ عَنْهُ وَصَلَ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَإِلَى الْجَنَّةِ مِنْ أَقْرَبِ الطُّرُقُ وَأَسْهَلُهَا Whoever travels its path, whoever travels the path of knowledge and doesn't falter, doesn't get distracted, right? And distraction can come in many ways, seeking knowledge, uh, for example, as an example for fame, that's a form of distraction. وَصَلَ إِلَى اللَّهِ If they can resist these temptations, they will reach Allah. Wasala ila Allah. They will reach Allah and they will reach paradise from the closest of paths, i.e., they will take the shortest, shortest route and the easiest route. Uh, and uh, and it will become easy for that person to reach paradise. Ila Jannah, fi dunya wal akhirah. Right? In this world, they will use the shortest route to get to paradise. And this reminds me of when people use maps, Google Maps, for example to reach their location in the quickest way. So this is what a person does. That if they seek knowledge with the right intention for the pleasure of God, then they will reach uh, paradise the quickest way. But he warns us, whoever travels this path, whoever travels a path thinking that they can travel the path to paradise, without knowledge فَقَدْ صَلَكَ أَعْصَلَ الْتُرُوكِ وَأَشْقَاهَا They've taken the worst path, they've taken the most difficult path i.e. you can't uh, you can't find paradise without knowledge you need knowledge, you need ilm that is why in our in our tradition Islam knowledge is central and many of our institutions, our ulama, our scholars, our teachers uh, uh, focus on the understanding of knowledge Otherwise, people will just um, do whatever they think is right without having any core principles, without having uh, revealed knowledge, sacred knowledge helping them. Of course, in our tradition, we work with revealed knowledge, with sacred knowledge, with revelation, and we combine that, we understand that through reason. Okay? وَلَا يُوَسِّلُ الْمَقْصُودِ مَا عَصُرِ الشَّرِيدَةٍ They won't reach their purpose, the maqsood. Right, their objective, which is here, the pleasure of God and paradise, um, like it will be very difficult for that person. 
right? And remember as, as a principle in our deen, Allah, God, does not want us to overburden ourselves. He doesn't want us to make life more difficult than it needs to be. This is a misunderstanding that some people have that, you know, you have to make life difficult for yourself. This is not necessarily true. فَلَا طَرِيقَ إِلَى مَعْرِفَةِ إِلَى مَعْرِفَةِ اللَّهِ وَإِلَى الْوُصُولِ إِلَى رِضْوَانِهِ وَالْفَوْزَ بِقُرْبِهِ وَمُجَاوَرَتِهِ فِي الْآخِرَةِ إِلَّا بِالْعِلْمِ الْنَافِعِ There is no path to know Allah and to uh, reach a state where you have His pleasure and to be successful by being close to Him بِقُرْبِهِ يعني بِقُرْبِ اللَّهِ This goes back to Allah and to mujawaratihi is from the word jar, right? To be uh, like a neighbor, literally. But to be close to God in the akhirah, in the life to come. Akhirah means something that's going to come later on. In our case, that's the life to come. Illa, you can't achieve all of these things. The knowledge of God to be to acquire His pleasure, to be successful by being close to Him, right? And success is being close to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Illa bil ilm bil nafi except with knowledge that is beneficial. It's interesting that they didn't just say ilm here, the Sheikh doesn't just mention ilm, knowledge in of itself, but he actually says beneficial knowledge. That through which he has sent by his, with his messengers, he's revealed in his books. That with this knowledge, with this guidance, they will be guided through it with this knowledge, armed with this knowledge. They will be guided through the darkness of ignorance and doubt and so forth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kitaba nuran. Allah has called his book, one of the books names for his book, uh, through which people uh, seek guidance in darkness. It's interesting that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, God uses the word zulumat in the plural sense, zulmun, in the plural sense to indicate to us that there are many uh, shades or many layers of darkness, right? But truth, guidance can only be one, light can only be one, nur. كما قال الله تعالى, as Allah says in the Quran, قَدْ جَاءَكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ نُورٌ uh, it, ha it has come to you from God, from Allah, light. وَكِتَابُ mubin, an open book. يَهْدِي بِهِ اللَّهُ مَنِ Allah guides through this book, through this book, that person who seeks his pleasure. سُبُلُ salam, the path of salam, the path of peace. وَيُخْرِجُهُمْ مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ إِلَى النُّورِ And he takes them out of darkness, plural, to light. And light is used in the singular many layers of darkness but to sing it to the singular truth to the light with a capital t for truth and uh, they will be guided to the straight path uh, so the prophet peace be upon him uses the example uh, draws the analogy of a person who hamala means literally to carry something on your back but the person who has knowledge um with that uh of light uh, of the stars that people use the stars to be guided right kama kana fil musnad an anas radiyallahu ta'ala anhu an an nabiy sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as mentioned in the musnad um from anas may Allah be pleased with him from the prophet inna mathal al ulama the the example of the religious scholars fil um, nujum. The religious scholars on this earth is like the stars fis sama in the heavens. biha fi zulumatil barri wal bahr. That with with them, with that knowledge, with the scholars, with the light of the stars or the the, the, the navigation of the stars, they are they can seek guidance in the darkness, whether that's on the earth or on the ocean. But if that light is lost, if there's no light anymore, it's extinguished, right? Then um, they'll be they'll be misguided. Even the person that's guiding them won't be able to guide them. So the ulama are here uh, given the example as stars. 
وهذا مثل في غاية المطابقة لأن تاريك التوحيد والعلم بالله وحكامه وثبابه وأقابه لا يدك بالحس حس right that this is a really good example he says مطابقة أي مطابقة means there's a relationship between using this example of the علماء the religious scholars and using the example of the stars because it's it's something that you can understand through your senses the prophet had this pedagogy this way of teaching where he would take sometimes things that se- seemed a little bit abstract and he would use very simple examples to make his point okay um وقد بين ذلك في كتابي وعلى لسان الرسول والعلماء بما انزل الله على رسوله هم الادلاء الذي ي... الذين يهتدي بهم في ظلمات الجهل والشبه والضلال that through the ulama through what god has revealed to his prophet that they are the ones whom the adil they are the ones who guide right through which they can guide people from the the darkness of ignorance and doubt and misguidance right uh فإذا فقدوا ضل السالك but if they are lost then the person cannot find his way the ulama are like a bridge a bridge uh, which can act as a way to reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reach God وقشبه العلماء بالنجوم they've been given a tashbih they've been um, the example of the ulama is through the stars like the stars والنجوم في السماء and the stars are obviously in the skies فيها ثلاث فوائد however the sheikh mentions that there are three benefits of this يهتدي بها في الظلمات وهي زينة للسماء ورجوم للشياطين الذين يسترقون السمع منها that through stars a person is able to find their way in the darkness i.e. navigate the stars are also a form of zina a form of adornment for the heavens and thirdly the stars are also um, a form of rajam like throwing pelting for the devil who uh, comes to the heavens to listen to uh, divine um, guidance or divine revelation or divine rulings being passed on to uh, to the to uh, to to the angels والعلماء في الآن تجتمع فيها ذي الأوثان ثلاثا and he says just like the stars have these three attributes the ulama on this earth like the, the stars in the heavens have three attributes هذه الأوصاف have three attributes بهم يهتدي في الظلمات with them through them people are able to seek uh, guidance in darkness يهتدي يهتدي الناس right people في الظلمات وهم زينة للأرض and the ulama are meant to be an adornment for this earth. وهم رجوم للشياطين الذين يخلطون الحق بالباطل. And they are also a, a form of repelling the devil because um, what does the devil do? What, do? what does evil do? It mixes good uh, virtue with evil, with truth and falsehood. وَيَدْخُلُونَ فِي الدِّينِ مَا لَيْسَ مِنْهُ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْأَهْوَى And people bring people can bring into the faith from for into the religion that is from that which is not part of the faith it doesn't belong and they bring their desires into the deen right they complicate the matters that whenever there is knowledge um, uh, on, on on this earth then people will, can seek guidance but he mentions the important point here that the uh, existence of knowledge the existence of knowledge or the knowledge remaining is predicated upon the ones who carry that knowledge remaining as well right? so if the ones who are carrying the knowledge are no longer here and the one who sustained that knowledge who passed that knowledge on then people will fall الناس, they'll fall into uh, misguidance as is mentioned in the hadith uh, from the prophet alayhi salatu wassalam that in allah la yaqbidu al-ilm intiza'an yantazi'uhu min sudur rijal that allah does not take away the knowledge uh, by taking away uh, it from the the, from the breasts of people, from chests of people, from people. وَلَكِنْ يُذْهِبُ الْعِلْمِ بِذَهَابِ الْعُلَمَاءِ So God does not take knowledge away itself. What He does 
is that he takes away knowledge by taking away the vessels of the knowledge, the carriers of the knowledge, which is the ulama. فَإِذَا لَمْ يَبْقَ عَالِمٌ When there's not a person left who is a religious scholar, practices upon that knowledge, teaching religious sciences, اِتَّخَذَ النَّاسُ رُؤُوسًا جُهَالًا The people will take ignorant people as their leaders. فَسُعِلُوا فَأَفْتَوْ بِغَيْرِ عِمْ That they'll ask them and they will give them opinions without any knowledge, without knowing what's going on. فَضَلُّوا وَأَضَلُّوا And they'll be guided misguided and the followers will also be misguided we seek Allah's protection there's in the hadith Imam Tirmizi mentions this from uh, which is narration of Jubay bin Nufair from Abu Darda where he says we were with the Prophet alayhi salatu salam فقال هذا أوان يختص العلم من الناس حتى لا يدير منه على شيء that a time will come, you know, there'll be people, um, knowledge will be taken from people, that there'll be no one um, to, uh, like, there'll be no knowledgeable people. So, فَقَالَ زِيَادْ بِنْ لُبِيدْ زِيَادْ بِنْ لُبِيدْ says, you know, how is this possible? كَيْفَ يُخْتَلَسُ مِنَّ الْعِمْ How is knowledge going to be taken? Because there are people amongst us who read the Qur'an, and you know our children read it, our women read it, um, and so the Prophet Sallallahu Abu Dada in this narration mentions that you know may your mother be uh, uh, bereft of you, right? This is an expression that they would use. In kunta la aduka fi al Marina. I used to think you were from the scholars, uh, the religious scholars, the Judas of Marina. Hazi Taurat wal Injil in the Yahud wal Nasara. This Taurat, this Injil which is with the Yahud and Nasara, Fama took Nyahum. How is it benefiting them? Call up Jube bin Nufay, Falakitu Ubada bin Sabit. I met Ubada bin Samit. So I said to him, Alat Isma Mayakulu Abu Dada. Have you have you heard what Abu Dada says? So I told him what he said, and he said, Abu Dada has spoken the truth. Um, that I will tell you, if you want, I will tell you the first knowledge that will be taken from people, Al Khushu. Khushu can mean here humility, but it can also mean here uh, devotion, concentration. Yushiku an tudkhala masjid al-jami' Masjid al-jami' Fala tara fiha khashiv A time will come where you'll enter the masjid The central masjid or the, the large masjid And you won't see anyone in there in a state of humility and khushu right, that this, is a, this, this, this is a state that will come upon people uh, And Imam Nasai uh, narrates from Jubay uh, bin Nufayr and Auf from Auf bin Malik and from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa something similar right and in the hadith he says فَذَكْرَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ ضَلَالَةَ الْيَهُودِ وَالنَّصَارَى عَلَى فِي أَيْدِيهِ مِنْ كِتَابِ اللَّهِ that they had these books the Yahud and Nasara had these books but they were still misguided right uh, so this is what the hadith says and I'll move on uh, Imam Ahmad from a hadith from Ziyad bin Labid and the Nabi sallallahu anahu zakra shay'an he says something very similar فَقَالَ ذَلِكَ إِنَّ أَوَانِ ذِهَابِ الْعِلْمِ فَذَكَرَ الْحَدِيثِ وَقَالَ فِيهِ أَوَلَيْسِ الْيَهُودِ وَالنَّصَاءِ يَقْرَعُونَ تَوْرَاتِ وَالْإِنْجِيلِ يَا لَا يَعْمَلُونَ بِشَيْءٍ مِمَّا فِيهِ that you not see that they are Yahud and the Christians are reading their scriptures but they are not acting لَا يَعْمَلُونَ بِشَيْءٍ مِمَّا فِيهِ they're not acting upon what is within those books فَفِي هَذِهِ الْحَدِيثِ أَنَّ ذِهَابُ الْعِلْمِ بِذَهَابِ الْعَمَلِ that um, when these these narrations are informing us that with the removal of knowledge will be the removal of acting upon that knowledge so in our tradition we don't just learn things for its sake to pass an exam for example we learn to act upon that knowledge to bring it practically into our lives right to change our beings and so they, when they were talking about uh, knowledge being taken away, they, they, they understood that there was a spiritual side to knowledge, the um, esoteric knowledge, the ilmul batin, right? That they will be, it will be taken away from the hearts of people and that was this humility and this sense of connection to God. So we'll stop there uh, and in the next lesson we'll continue from here. Stay safe, see you all soon, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.